This episode is brought to you by CarMax. Boldly searching for your next used vehicle? With CarMax, you don't have to settle on anything when it comes to your ride. Instead, steer clear of the ordinary and buy the car that's right for you. Because CarMax makes it easy to stop settling and find a car you'll love today. Start shopping now at CarMax.com. CarMax, the way car buying should be. It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. QuietPlease.org presents Quiet Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Paul Miram. Quiet Please for tonight is called Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. You haven't got any idea. You haven't got an idea in the world, no sir. If I was to do the right thing, I'd take him and I'd cut his head off. As a matter of fact, Eddie, if I had the intestinal fortitude of of a llama or something, a llama, you know, the the cro- like in the crossword puzzles, some sort of camel or something that lives up in the mountains, I said if I had the courage of a llama, I'd just up and kill the man. What? Oh. It's all right, for heaven's sake. Nobody's listening on the telephone. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll stack up old man Everwine against your boss any day and give you two to one odds, too. Did I tell you about this morning? Well, you know when I saw you in the drugstore when I was having coffee? Huh? Oh, you know her. She's a model. I just ran into her as I was going to the drugstore, and I said, have a cup of coffee with me. I don't know, uh, Peters, or Peterson, or something like that. Evelyn. Evelyn Peters, or Peterson, or something. No, costume stuff. Well, when I was in the drugstore, I'm sorry, I I meant to give you the 75 cents I borrowed, and I forgot all about it. Remind me, will you, Eddie? Well, not the drugstore. Ah, that old, that old goon has forbidden every one of us to go downstairs for coffee during working hours. Everwine, it's all right. He can go down and drink coffee till it runs out his ears, but the art department can sit up there and starve for all he cares. Well, I think it's pretty small of a man. After all, we're not just laborers, you know. Oh, uh, what I started to say. Right after you walked out, he walked in. Now, I was talking to this Peters or Peterson or whoever she is, and I didn't see him at all. First thing I knew was he shoved that great, big, ugly, unshaven puss of his right between me and this Peterson character. Well, I wasn't saying anything. And, And he said, Oliver, did you forget your drawing board? I give you my word, Eddie. Boiling hot coffee. I pretty near incinerated myself. I was so startled. And I started burbled through the coffee. And I said, like an utter idiot, What drawing board, Mr. Everwine? And he said, The one you left upstairs. And he said, Do you want me to bring it down here, Oliver, so you can combine business and pleasure? And that Peterson, she laughed right out loud. I could kill her, too. What? Well, what if I am being bloodthirsty tonight? I've got a right to. What? Oh. Well, then he kind of gritted his teeth, and he looked just like Victor McLaughlin or somebody. He said, get back upstairs. Believe me, Eddie, people just kind of shrunk away like an earthquake or something. And I felt about this high. Do? What could I do? I put your 75 cents on the counter... The whole 75 cents started, and I just slunk out. And you know what he did? 
You won't believe it. He sat right down there with that Peterson, whatever her name is, and he bought her another cup of coffee. With the 75 cents I borrowed from you to add insult to injury. Do you wonder I want to murder him? And her too? The way she laughed? Oh yes. And then, get this. When he came back upstairs a half hour later, half an hour, he walked in and stood looking over my shoulder. And you know how that always gives me the screaming meanies to have somebody looking over my shoulder while I'm dry? Oh, doesn't you? Well, does me. I go nuts. And so what happens? He just stands there and stands there, and I get jitterier and jitterier, and all of a sudden, I put my sleeve right in the middle of the design I just finished taking in. Label for a shoebox, all full of, you know, Pompeian borders and curly cues and stuff and things, you know. Oh, ruined it. Murdered it. And that fiend in human form stood there and laughed fit to bust. Losing your touch, Oliver, he said. I have you my word, Eddie. I was so close to Boston, and I just kept drawing great big deep breaths, getting fuller and fuller of air, and finally I yelled at him. Oh, I always make a fool of myself. What? I said, give me back my 75 cents, Mr. Everwine. Oh, go on and laugh. Did you ever in all your life hear anything so ridiculous? That's what I was saying. If I had the, the whatever it is of a llama or something, I'd have brained the man with a T-square or something. And I haul it for six bits. Oh, he had a fit. He just laid down on the floor and howled. <laughs> I had one satisfaction, though. Whitey Haynes, you know, sits back of me with dark glasses. He just dropped a whole jar of vermilion paint on the floor, and everyone didn't know about it. What? Just wallowed in it? Well, so I had to stay and work overtime to get this hideous label finished so they can ship it out to Little Rock, wherever it goes. And that's why I'm not going bowling tonight. No, you'll just have to get a substitute, Eddie. I'm dead. Ooh, Caroline? Oh no, she's out to some clam bake or something. That woman. I could cut her throat with a, a bottle opener or something. Preferably a dull one. You know what she left me for dinner? Listen. One can of tuna fish. One slice of dry whole wheat bread a warm bottle of cherry soda, and eleven hard-boiled eggs. And she bent the frosting the refrigerator and forgot to turn it on again. No, Eddie, I have a stomach ache for one thing. My head hurts. My hands and arms are tired. I am a dead man, and I definitely will not bowl this evening. I am going to sit here and think of different ways to murder Mr. Klaus Everwine, my favorite art director and perhaps that Peterson girl, or whatever her name is, and possibly Caroline, the wife of my bosom. And if you continue to shout in my ear about bowling, I shall include you. Yes, Eddie. No, Eddie. Good night, Eddie. Oh, oh me... Oh, I should bowl of all things. Where do you suppose the woman is? I shouldn't have eaten those hard-boiled eggs. Now, who's that? Calling me up in the middle of the night? If that's Eddie again about bowling, I'll murder him. The crest of the man. Hello, I am not going bowling. Hello, Eddie. Hello, hello, hello. Why, you rang me, young woman. Yes, you did. Oh, it's doorbell. Excuse me. Caroline, of course. Forgotten her key again. If that woman doesn't do something about remembering her keys, I'm simply going to kill her. Well, oh, my love. What did you call me, Oliver? Miss, Mr. Everwine. Well... Are you going to let me in or not? 
Why, certainly, Mr. Everwine. Please come in, sir. Come in and have a chair, sir. Who did you think I was, anyway? I thought you had forgotten your key. What? Are you nutty? I'm sorry, Mr. Everwine. I mean, I mean, I thought it was my wife who has gone out and has possibly forgotten her key. I mean, she often forgets when she goes out. I, I thought it was my wife. For the love of Mike, will you stop gibbering? Yes, Mr. Everwine. Well, uh, what brings you to our neighborhood, I'm, sh I'm sure? Oliver, you know, if you weren't the best freehand design man I've got in the shop... I mean, I'm not, Mr. Everwine. I'd try to have you committed. I don't think you've got all your buttons. Mr. Everwine, I've got my buttons all right, but for heaven's sake, Mr. Everwine, I get embarrassed. At what? When people start yelling at me or anything, I'm, I mean... Am I yelling at you, Oliver? Well, you... you do. Am I yelling at you now, Oliver? No, no, sir. Well, stop looking silly, then. I've got something for you to do. Huh? Now? Yes, right now. But, Mr. Everwine, I'm all in. I... Never mind that. This is a rush job that the merchandising department has to have first thing in the morning. Is there much? Maybe I could get up early? Nope. This'll take you nearly all night, Oliver. Oh, my. See, this is the layout. I want a hand-drawn border, 13 by 27, see? And all these decorative doodars in each corner and hand lit of the trademark here, see? No, here, right down your alley, Oliver. Oh, but I'm so tired. My hands are trembling, even. Now, now, Oliver. Sir? You like your job, don't you? Well... You know, artists are a dime a dozen, Oliver. Good ones, though. A dime a dozen. All right, you going to do it or not? Oh, well... Okay, get at it now. And I want it on my desk at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock on the nose. This drawing has to get to the merchandising department at 8.30, and I want to see it first. Eight o'clock. You heard me. All right, get to work. And don't get it all smeared up either like you did that one today. All right, Mr. Everwine. Good night. Good night, Mr. Everwine. You still standing there? Get to work. Yes, Mr. Everwine. <laughs> yeah. He thought it was you. <laughs> what? What do you mean? When I rang the bell, you thought it was you. Thought you'd forgotten your key. Oh, my goodness. I did forget it. Well, that's clever. How are you going to get in? I'll climb in through a window, I guess. <laughs> Remember that other time when I left my key? I climbed in the kitchen window. He never even moved. Yeah, but this time it'll be a wait working, Caroline. Oh, well, I'll tell him some kind of story. He'll believe anything. Are we going to sit here all night? I should say not. Where do you want to go? Some place where we can dance. Sure, we can go any place we want to. We won't be showing up, that's for sure. Like that time at the Cotton Club when he and Eddie came in, and we had to hide in the check room? Well, that little job of work will keep little Oliver neatly stashed away for a long time, kid, so forget him. I always forget Oliver when I'm with you, Mr. Everwine. <sighs> well, I don't know, Eddie. I don't know what to do. I've been working all night. I guess I must have fallen asleep or something, and when I woke up, I went to the bedroom to see if she was there, but she wasn't. Well, then I thought, I'll, I'll call up Eddie and see if his missus has seen my missus. Say she hasn't? I wonder where she can be. No, never as late as this. For heaven's sake, it's half past four. Oh, I suppose she's... Gabbing with some dizzy dame and just hasn't looked at the clock or something. Well, obviously can't call up all of her friends looking for her, waking them up out of their favorite nightmares and asking silly questions. I suppose she'll come home eventually. 
But I tell you, if I had her here, I'd take a club and beat her head in. Oh, working. I didn't tell you, Eddie. That, that, that fiend, that Everwine, showed up about 9.30 with a rush job. I have to turn in at 8 o'clock in the morning. For gosh sakes, it isn't finished yet. I fell asleep. Brought it right to the house. Yelled at me. What was I going to do? Oh, sure. Threatened my job. Hey, I promise you a day will come when I'll take that man and I'll fill him so full of lead they can use him for, for a paperweight. Did you have a good time bowling? What did you roll? Oh, only 134 average? You're slipping, Eddie. Ugh. Golly, I'm sleepy. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Eddie. I didn't realize keeping you awake, too. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But I do wish I knew where Caroline was. Is, I mean. I just thought she and her missus... Oh, I said that. Well, thanks, Eddie. Good night, Eddie. Hmm. Well, let me see. Not another hour's work, I guess. That ever wine, ever swine, that's what he is. I could cheerfully watch him being eaten alive by an alligator or something. I know this night work is going to ruin my eyes. I think I'll go pour some cold water on them. Oh boy, I like to put boiling water, you know, boiling oil on that man. Yes, and on that wife of mine. Oh, that water's cold. Makes my eyes feel better, though. I wish I had that Caroline here. I'd drown her. Staying out till broad daylight, playing bridge or something, letting me worry my head off. I don't care where she is. I'd be better off without her. <sighs> I'm a fine-looking side, ain't I? Look at that face. Red eyes. Hair's getting thin. Hello, you ugly brute. You used to be good-looking once, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting old, losing your nerve, afraid to stand up to people. Afraid to give Everwine what he's got coming. Afraid to smack your wife across the puss? Why don't you come out of that mirror and do something? Answer me, why don't you? Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to murder my... It talked back to me. It answered me. Yes, I answered you. Now answer me, you jerk. This, this is not true. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's still there. I'm still here, and I'm getting awfully tired of you. What do you want me to do that you're too much of a coward to do? You are my reflection in the bathroom mirror. I am. And you are talking back to me. I am. This can't be. What a jerk you are. You can't talk to me like that. I'm talking to you like that. Listen, Oliver, every person's got two sides, you see? I'm the rough side of your character. Well, for heaven's sake, who do you want killed? Would you kill somebody? With pleasure. I'll be darned. Oliver, where's your wife? That woman! I'll break her neck! That, Oliver, is a very good idea. I'll be right back. Hey. Hey. Am I crazy? Where... Where's my reflection? It's... He's gone. My gracious, I've got to run. Why, it's practically broad daylight. 
How are you going to get in, Caroline? Maybe he'll be asleep. I sure hope so, for your sake. My sake? Ha! Huh. Don't worry about me. Anyway, I can always climb in the window. Well, good night, or good morning, I guess it is. Yeah, I had a swell time, Everwine. Why do you always call me Evervine? I like it. Kiss the girl, Everwine. Thanks, Everwine. You sure you don't want me to run you home? Oh, no, it's only three blocks, and besides, he might see your car. I'll be all right. Thanks for fun. Night. Night, honey. <gasps> Oliver! Yeah? Oliver, what are you... I mean... Come here, Caroline. Oliver, no! Oliver, what are you going to do? Why, I'm going to break your neck, Caroline. Ah! You see? I, I'm going to count to ten, and if that reflection isn't back there, I'm going to call up the police and explain that I've gone crazy, I've been driven crazy by overwork. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, I, I better shut my eyes and do it over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now. Oh, it is back. Sure, I'm back. Oh, for heaven's sake, where have you been? You said you wanted to break Caroline's neck. Huh? Well, I broke it. You did? I mean, you did? Yeah, just as easy. Well... Where did you find her, if you broke her neck? Up there in front of that apartment building Everwine lives in. What? You fool! You fool! Be careful there, Oliver. Be careful of what? Don't break the mirror. I will if I want to. Be sorry if you do. What? Why? Because this is where I live, see? I am going completely, comprehensively, utterly stark, staring, mad, insane, crazy. Nutty. No, you're not, Oliver. You're a split personality now, kid. Schizophrenic. And just one more thing before you answer the door. Door? What door? It'll be the cops coming to tell you about finding Caroline with her neck busted. But, but I didn't. That's what I was going to tell you. Don't tell me to do things you don't want done, Oliver. I don't kid around. I do them, kid. See? Listen. Go to the door, Oliver. It's the cops. You got nothing to worry about, kid. You got a swell alibi. Go ahead. There just isn't anything to say, Eddie. What? I know. I said that. I said I'd like to murder her, but you know. Well, she's dead. Listen, Eddie, I, I can't tell you about this on the telephone. But I'm, I'm under some kind of technical arrest or something. I know they're going to accuse me of murdering her. Honestly, Eddie, I was right here in the house all the time. You know that. I talked to you on the phone. Remember? Yes, but they said somebody saw a fellow they thought was me running away from the corner or, or she. But I was here. Eddie, I was right here. I was in the bathroom. Eddie, I need a lawyer. So do you want to be my lawyer? I haven't got a whole lot of money, Eddie, really. But I guess maybe I got enough if you don't charge too much. I'd rather have a lawyer I know, you know, instead of some stranger. Will you, Eddie? No, I can't leave the house, so you better come over here, Eddie. Eddie, listen, I can explain the whole thing. Maybe you won't believe it, but maybe I can prove it to you. Oh, Eddie, and to think that Everwine, that rat, that snake, that I could chop his ugly head off. Wait a minute, Eddie. I, I thought I heard a door. Oh my gracious, Eddie, what have I done now? <laughs> Yep.
Yes? Mr. Everwine, Oliver is here. Oliver? Well, uh, tell him I can't see him now. Tell him... I told him you were busy, but he insists on seeing you, Mr. Everwine. Is, is the door locked? Yes, Mr. Everwine. Tell him I can't see him. Just a second, Mr. Everwine. He can't see you now, Oliver. Oliver! Oliver! Wait! No! No, Oliver! Oliver, uh, listen, Oliver. Sorry I had to bust the door, Everwine. Oliver, listen, it's pure coincidence that... What, sir? You know it was, Oliver. You know perfectly well, Oliver. I know all about it, Everwine. Now, Oliver, get away from me, Oliver. Why do you suppose I broke her neck, Everwine? Did... did you? Ah. Oh. I certainly did. It was just as easy. You... you killed her? With these hands, Everwine. Let me answer the phone. Sure. Hello, this is Everwine, Polly. Stop that. Take it easy. Answer the phone decent now. Yes. Mr. Everwine, this is Oliver. What? This is Oliver, Mr. Everwine. Somebody's coming up there to kill you. Who are you? Oliver, I said, Mr. Everwine. I don't really want to kill you. What? I said this is Oliver, right? Oliver is standing alongside my desk, threatening to kill me. Is this some kind of joke? Is this... That's him, Mr. Everwine. That's him. He's going to cut your head off. Give me that phone, Everwine. Hello, Oliver. Listen, Oliver, keep your shirt on. You said the guy's head off. I can't help it. You know your wish is my command, Oliver, old kid. And the funny thing is I'm getting to like it. Now shut up and let me alone, will you? Now, Everwine. You got a sword or something around here? Huh? Hi, Daddy. I know. I know all about Everwine. I called him on the phone, but it was too late. He took the phone away from Everwine and told me what he was going to do, and there wasn't any way to stop him, Eddie. Eddie, please come over. You're going to have me for another murder, Eddie, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it, I tell you. I was right here. I talked to Everwine on the phone. You can ask him it. Oh, my goodness, no. You can't, can you? Eddie, please come over. All right, Eddie. Yes, Eddie. No, Eddie. Goodbye, Eddie. What am I going to do? Oh, they'll hang me or something. How am I going to stop this? I Jiminy G, that's it. The mirror, the mirror, the mirror. Why didn't I think of that before? I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Where's where's a hammer or something? Aha, the drinking glass. I'll fix you, Mr. Reflection. I'll fix you. There. You're going to be sorry, Oliver. What? Who was that? I told you you'd be sorry, Oliver. I'd have gone back into the mirror and you'd never been bothered with me anymore. But you busted it. I got no place to go now, kid. No place to go. I'm on the town, Oliver. I'm on the world, kid. Every time you think of killing somebody... <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You sure done it now, Oliver. Keep your mind clean, baby. Hey, hey, where did you... where did you go? No, I can't tell you where I am, Eddie. You wouldn't recognize me if you saw me, either. I'm in disguise. Police are looking for me everywhere, Eddie. Just everywhere. Oh, you know that? Well, I just had to call you. I had to, Eddie. We used to have such fun, darn it, Eddie. Now everything's so awful. Eddie, I don't kill people. I didn't kill anybody, Eddie. Honest. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But you know how it is. If I even think of somebody that ought to be killed, if I just say I could kill that fellow, why, boom, he's dead, Eddie. 
It's a curse. It's horrible. I don't know what to do. Eddie, I could just murder everybody in the world, you know. If I dream about killing somebody, it's in the papers the next morning. If I say I hope you should... Oh, no, I, I mustn't say it. It's my reflection. Reflection from the mirror. No, I'm not crazy. I thought I was. I know I'm not. Eddie, I'm scared every minute. Sure, you could tie me up so I couldn't talk, but all I got to do is think. I think, murder, and he's right there to do it. What, Eddie? No. No, there's nothing I can do about it. My goodness, if I show myself on the streets, I'll be arrested instantly. Oh, Eddie, I wish I was dead. What, Eddie? I said, gosh, what can I do? I said I wish I was dead. Why, Oliver, you know, I think we can handle that. You have listened to Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. Tonight's story was called Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. The man who talked to you was Paul Nero. And Kylie played Caroline. Brian Hunt was Everline. Colleen Meyer was the receptionist. Music for Quiet Please is composed and played by Gene Carrasso. Now for a word about next week's Quiet Please, here is our writer-director... Willis Cooper. I have a story for you next week about something that happened, or at least it might have happened, in the early days of World War II. The story is called A Ribbon of Lincoln Green. I hope you'll like it. And so, until next week at this same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. Quiet Please came to you from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.